Hello. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about variables, which are one of the most integral parts of the workshop. Once you understand how to use this, you unlock so much potential with what you can do. Variables can be used to store data that can be accessed at any point. There are global variables and player variables. Global variables are simply assigned to the game, and player variables are assigned to a player. When the workshop first released, you could only have 26 of each kind, and they were only labeled A to Z. Now you're actually able to have as many variables of each kind as you want, server load permitting. And you can rename them as well, which is extremely useful for keeping track of what variable does what. You can view and rename your variables by going to your workshop and clicking this button up here, Edit Variable Names. You can see over here, these are all your global variables, and these are all of your player variables. So let's say I wanted to create a checkpoint system. I'll start by renaming global variable A to checkpoint. Then to place my checkpoints, I'll go ahead and load into the game as a spectator. Note that any positions in our script will not translate to other maps. For this example, I'm just going to stick with Hanamura. So now that I'm loaded in, I'm going to go ahead and find where I want to put my checkpoints. So I'd like to set my first checkpoint right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put my camera right here. And I can set my position where my camera is currently at. So to do that, I'm going to go into the workshop here. I already have a rule created. The way we can save our vectors, I'll just go ahead and set something up here just to show you how we can uh, set our vectors. So we'll just do event player there. If we have a vector position set up, you can see by default um, the x, y, and z values are set to 0, 0, and 0. And in this case, uh, this just corresponds to world coordinates in the map, your x, y, and z positioning. So in order to set where you are currently at, you can use this button. Now you can use this as a character, but I think it's much better to use it as the spectator camera for two reasons. One, because you have a lot more control than if you were a player character, because you can obviously fly up and down and get a lot lower to the ground. And the second reason is because heroes have animations, so your camera isn't completely steady like it is with the spectator camera. So if you wanted to get the exact same vector every time while without moving with a hero you're gonna have a little tiny bit of variation every time you click that camera button so here's another use for our um, variables instead of doing this for right now we're just gonna load our positions into more global variables so we'll rename B to checkpoint position and you noticed if I put a space in there, it doesn't let you do that. Uh, you can't have spaces or anything that's not alphanumeric. And so I'm going to have three checkpoints here. So I have those named. And you may be thinking there is definitely a better way to do this. And you're right, but we'll get to that in a bit. So we have those saved as the position, as the checkpoint numbers. Since we have these saved, um, once we assign a vector to these variables, we can then reference the variable instead of having to type out the vector every single time you want to reference this checkpoint. So we're just going to come in here and we're going to actually, uh, first of all, just define those vectors on those variables. So I'll just call this rule uh, checkpoint positions. And we don't need any conditions. That means if it's a global rule with no conditions, that means it'll just activate as soon as the game starts and then no more. So we'll go ahead and start set the global variable checkpoint position one to a vector, this one, where I'm currently at. Just to make this easier on myself, because I'm going to do two more. I'm going to copy and paste them. Now move to where my second checkpoint will be, over here. Go back into here, change this to position 2, and save this new vector. And we'll just do that one more time. So 
So now we have these three vectors saved in our variables. I'll go ahead and set up some effects so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better. So I went ahead and I made some effects and some text so we can visually see where we have our checkpoints set up. I'll get more into text and effects in another video, but actually if we go ahead and load in right now, I don't have any rules that actually do anything whenever you're in the checkpoint. They're just sort of set as positions with effects on them so that you can see where they're at. So in order to actually make them function as checkpoints, we're going to go ahead and go back into the editor. We're going to do an each player so that we can detect when the event player goes into the area. Now for this one, it'll just be for checkpoint one. We'll create a new condition. We'll do a distance between. The start position will be the event player. And the end position, we'll just go ahead and select the global variable and checkpoint position one. Now we'll go here and we'll just do less than number two. Now this, is, this number is just in meters for distance and two just happens to be the radius that I chose for our effects here. So the distance from here to here is two. So it just detects if the event player the distance from the event player to that point right there is less than two. So once this happens, we're going to have the checkpoint go up to one. We could just take this and copy and paste it twice for the other two. We'll just change this to checkpoint position two. Make it so that it sets the global variable to 2. Switch this to checkpoint position 3. And set the checkpoint variable to 3. Okay, so here we have our checkpoint set up, and it will actually detect whenever we step into the checkpoints. Currently, the only way to check what the checkpoint is, is to go into our workshop inspector. And here we can see our variables listed. You can see the vector for checkpoint position one, vector for position two, and three. And you can see our checkpoint is at zero. So if we step into here, if we, even if we leave, you can see here that the checkpoint went up to one. And if I move over here, you can see the checkpoint moved up to two. Now there are a couple issues with how we have it set up right now. For one thing, the only condition is if we walk into these areas. So even though I already stepped in two, I can step back into one and it'll set the checkpoint back down to one. And that's not usually how checkpoints work. And another issue is that there is no indication that we have stepped into the checkpoint. So we'll go ahead and fix those issues right now. So we'll open up our checkpoint rules. And we're just gonna add another condition. One of our conditions for this is that the checkpoint should be zero. This will prevent us from setting the checkpoint to 1 if we've already set the checkpoint to 1, 2, or 3. We'll just go ahead and copy and paste that in the other two. For this one, we're going to have it so that the checkpoint has to be 1. And for this one, the checkpoint needs to be 2. Now for our indication that we actually activated the checkpoint, We'll just use a big message visible to all players and for our string we'll just type in checkpoint one activated and again we'll just copy and paste those and 
we'll restart to save our changes. So let's give this a try. Before I start, I'm going to actually try and enter 2, and we'll see what happens. We'll check our inspector. Checkpoint is at 0, so that's good. No message. That's a good sign. Check our inspector again, and checkpoint is still 0. And you see if I step into checkpoint 1, I get the message. The global variable is set to 1 and I can't activate it again. Let's try and skip ahead to three. Doesn't work. If we step into two, that works. And three. So let's talk about player variables. For this example, I'm gonna do a player variable that keeps track of how much damage a character is doing. So to do this, I have a dummy bot set up that's going to spawn in so we can do some damage. To keep track of how much damage, uh, we're actually going to rename our first player variable here to player damage. To keep track of how much damage that they're going to be doing, we're going to use the player dealt damage event. And all we're going to do is go into our action for whenever the damage is dealt we'll have it modify our player variable the player damage variable add the event damage and then I'll just create some text so that we can see that update in real time okay so if you see at the top left of the screen here I have a text box here to show you how much damage that my character has done in the game. And right now it's a zero obviously, I haven't done any. So if I just go ahead and damage this Roadhog a little bit, you can see that adds up the damage that I've done. And now it's a 600, the amount of health that Roadhog has. So obviously there's a lot more that you can keep track of than what I've shown you here, but that's sort of just the basics of how these variables work. And as we get more into other parts of the workshop, you'll start to see that the flexibility of the variables really helps you to build pretty much anything that comes to mind within the realm of what the game can handle. Thanks for watching.